Hi, and welcome to this video tutorial where I'm going to show you how I built this keyword research tool using bolt.new for the front end and doing all the development for me and using data for SEO as the data source. That way my keyword research has up to date and high quality data about whatever it is that I want to research. Let me show you the functionalities first of it. And by the way, you can ha you can use this tool completely for free. I've given you three free users a day. And then if you want more users, I'm gonna show you how you can extend that also for free for a little bit using your own API. Key. If you don't know me, my name is Nico. I run an AI powered SEO agency. Most importantly, I run an online community, the AI Ranking School community, where we simplify SEO and we teach you and show you how to maximize search engine optimization, helping your website rank number one with AI tools and automations, much like the one I'm going to build today. If you're interested in learning more about this and joining a community where you're going to get more support, I recommend you check out our free community. For disclosure, there is also a paid community, but that's if you want more support, two weekly Q&As, a full-time SEO support coordinator, and much, much more. I'll leave a link to both if you're interested, but I suggest you start with a free community. So let me show you the functionalities of this tool and how you can try it. You see up here, it says keyword research tool, discover valuable keywords to improve your SEO strategy. When you first go onto the page, it's gonna say three free searches. That's from me to you as a gift just for watching the video. And if you wanna use this on a daily basis, by all means, it's yours. So it's got three, four main functionalities, related keywords, keyword ideas, keywords for a website, and what the FAQ, what the FAQs. So related keywords, let's uh, test it out. Obviously, let's put in, for example, learn SEO. And you can select the countries here. I'm going to leave United States. You've got different sort of different languages, the depth in terms of how deep you want it to go within that. And the limit is really important in terms of how many keywords you actually want it to suggest to you. Let's leave the limit at 30, for example. And I'm going to go search related keywords. It's calling the data for SEO API and giving me related keywords to the first one. So learn SEO, some related keywords would be uh, what is SEO, Google SEO courses, SEO courses. That makes complete sense, right, for that keyword. I see the search volume, that's monthly search volume within that country that I've selected. The cost per click, should I run ads to that keyword, the competition and the relevance as well. So now I've got 30 keywords there. Let's try now keyword ideas. I'm gonna leave the same keyword there and go learn SEO. Now I've got more broad keywords. The difference here is that the related keywords are a lot more in alignment with the original word that you were searching for, longer tail keywords, for example, whereas the ideas, keyword ideas, is gonna be a lot broader keywords. They might not all be in alignment, but it's just good to get an idea as well. And this one's gonna give you as well, the search volume, the cost per click, the competition, and the search intent, meaning if it's navigational, commercial, or informational. Again, you can have all this stuff here. And now let's say that I don't know how to start, where to start with keyword ideas. There's one, two more functionalities here. This one is called keywords for a site. I'm gonna use this here, place in a URL there, and it'll help me understand what are the keywords that I should be able to rank for, or I should rank for in this website, or at least I should try for. Got here, learn the basics of SEO, what the monthly search volume of that is, and uh, again, the difficulty in the search intent. Just for reference as well, this is a this is the blog that I place in there, blog from, from SEM Rush, on to how to use that stuff, which is great. And finally, what the FARC, what the frequently asked questions are, learn SEO, again, we're just gonna leave it as it is, and we should have a couple of questions here. Now, after you use it for a bit, you'll see that the numbers here start going down. I had three free searches left. Now I've got one. I want to use the final one because I want to show you what happens after that. So let's go to the FAQ so you can see how that works. Learn SEO, hit find questions, and it'll find all of the frequently asked questions within the United States that it can around Learn SEO. All subdivided into what, who, where, why, how questions. Really useful, and again, you've got the search volume, cost per click, and the competition for that key volume. Another functionality that I forgot to mention, I added an export to CSV, so that data there, you can just download as a CSV file, and you can upload that to Google Sheets or whatever you want. 
you see that this little message came up as well. So if you want more credits, all you need to do is get your own API key from Data for SEO. You can sign up to Data for SEO and get free credits with this button here. Once you create an account, all you got to do is go to API access and you will have automatically a dollar within your credits inside your Data for SEO account. This is given to you for free by Data for SEO by using the link that I've just provided there. You might not think that a dollar is a lot, but it's actually a lot of searches for Data for SEO. That's why this application is so good. The way you're going to do that is, so the API logins that you need, by the way, this is your email, and then you're going to click send by email the API password. You're going to go back to the application. You're going to go hit settings up here. And then the username is where you type in the uh, email there and the password. Well, we just got sent that by email. So in this case, I will blur it out, but I'll place it in here and then save API configurations. And now you see if I go back to search, I can use this thing as much as I want. You'd be surprised how many searches you'd be able to do with $1 worth of credit. Then should you really like this tool and want to use it more, you can add more credits to Data for SEO. But the way, why I really like it is a, is a pay-as-you-go type tool. So if you want to pay so if you want to pay $50, which is the minimum payment, but that's all you pay for a long while, there you go. You don't have to do a reoccurring reoccurring payment every month, which I think is quite nice. So why did I build this and how did I go about it? Well, I built it because I was really frustrated how expensive most of the keyword research tools are. I mean, you're paying around $129 both for SEM Rush and Ahrefs. I know Ahrefs has a, has a, a smaller tier of payment, but you're still paying like $29 a month, which I think personally is too expensive for keyword research. So the, day, the way that I went about this is using bolt.new and we're going to try and build at least one of the functionalities together, the related keywords. There is, you can sign up to bolt.ai and you'll be able to use it for a few uh, users in the day and it might be enough to create this application together. So I'll leave a link for you to sign up with bolt.ai below. So here's what do you want to build right away and we can prompt it here. Before you go into that, and you can build pretty much whatever you want. But I wanted to add some real world up-to-date data with data for SEO because that is really good. Otherwise, it's just making up gibberish data, even if you connect it to um, GPT and whatnot. So I had to understand how the data needs to be called and how it's going to be returned. Now, I know nothing about coding, but each API, each API for a application will come with a set of documentation. And Data for SEO has just that. I'll leave a link to this if you want as well below, but I've gone into Google keyword research and then keyword suggestions. So this tells me all about how this works and how it's called and the field names and the functions that you get back, the data that you get back. So this is a example of how the JSON data is structured back to you when you do a function call. You can also use the uh, playground section for data for SEO. So if I go into the playground and if I go data for SEO labs, which is kind of their own components here, and I use the functions related keywords, fantastic. I can do the location, uh, select everything, and I'm just going to do learn for SEO. Learn SEO as the keyword here. The limit, I want 10 uh, related keywords that I want to go crazy, and I'm going to go request. This is good because you can see the data then on the right hand side how it's given back. So it's said here that for the seed keyword, a suggestion is or related keyword is Google Analytics, which makes sense because that's a pretty important component of um, learning SEO. And if we crawl down, it gives us a bunch of other related keywords as well. So that's a, a lot of data that then we need to tidy up and everything, but thankfully. Bolt.new will be able to do all that for us. So all I really do is think about the data, the functions that I want back and I want neatly presented in my web app. So I've got here the example of the structure. And really I want the keywords that I get given, the search volume, I see that here, the competition level, 
and then the cost per click. And that's all within the JSON files that are returned. So all I did in this instance is I grabbed an example, not of all of it, but of some of the keywords that are returned. And I copied this whole thing. So that's going to, I'm going to give that to Bolt to say, hey, this is how the data is called. This is how the data is returned. I want X, Y, and Z bits of data shown. So the monthly search volume, the difficulty, the cost per click and it should sort out the rest. So I'm gonna to go to bolt.ai and we're going to prompt this together. So we're going to say, I want you to help me build a, I want you to help me build a keyword research tool using the Data for SEO API. Uh, there should be an input box in this web app of the keyword that I want to do research on, the location, and a submit button. And once you submit that keyword research, you should make the call as instructed below to data for SEO, and then show me all the relevant data. I wanna see the related keywords, the monthly search volume, and the cost per click. Let's write that down. So I've got the prompt in there telling it just what we discussed before. I want you to help me build a keyword research tool for SEO using the data for SEO API. I will provide you the example of the CURL call to make uh, for that is for that for so you know how to call it. There should be three main inputs because we need some user input here, including the keyword, uh, the country as a drop down, and the language and I would like the data return to be shown presented neatly. I want to see the suggested keyword itself, the monthly search volume, competition, and cost per click. And then below, I've provided that code example that I just copied. Really rough, but bolt.new is getting smarter and smarter. They're doing updates to it that are very, very good. It makes it very easy for someone like me who doesn't know how to code, but understands where the good data is coming from to be able to build a simple web app. Now, in a previous video, while this is loading, I created an automation with data for SEO and make that does also all of the keyword research that you want. I'll leave a video link to that if you want to check that out. But I also want to be able to use this tool in a much more user-friendly format as opposed to using it in a complete and complicated automation, which has its pros, but also has its cons that it makes it a little bit difficult to use if you don't know how to use make. Great, so now I see the SEO keyword research tool looks very much like the other one that we've built. Uh, let's do something different like horse supplements, for example, which is so we're not searching for the same thing and go search for keywords. It's probably not going to work the first time, so it failed to search the data. Let's say here, uh, it failed to search. Please input my own API information. Uh, unlike other um, AI powered uh, web app builders or application builders, it'll tag your API key and your secret code or whatever. Most of them say you shouldn't share your key, but Bolt kind of doesn't matter. It understands that you want to do this just to test it out. So I'm going to go to data for SEO. I'm going to go to API access, which I just showed you before how to do this stuff. And I'm going to go to copy the API login, which is my email. And I've got the password here. I'm going to blur this out just for security purposes and hit enter and see if this is going to work. Looks like it ran into an error. I'm just going to go attempt to fix itself. Okay, perfect. Let's try it again. We're going to go to horse supplements as well. United States, the language, English. We're going to search for the keyword. Perfect. And it didn't find any. Let's try another keyword because that might have been a little bit difficult one. So let's just go SEO and see if it finds the related keywords. And it looks like it's not working, but we're not getting an error message. And here's why I say that it's often really good. A lot of people say that coding is dead and you don't need to code anymore. I don't think that's quite true anymore because, you know, if I knew how to code, I'd probably be able to handle the errors a lot quicker and understand the basis of what formulates a good web application. So if you do know how to code, you're still ahead of a lot of people and you wouldn't have wasted, you know, half a weekend like I did to create the whole app that I showed you in the beginning. But regardless, it's also a good way to learn just to kind of stumble through it, see what works and see what doesn't. Let's try this again, horse supplement, language English and go search results. So now it didn't work again. And what I did is I actually gave the URL of where the, all the information was here. Maybe this wasn't enough. So I just copied that URL. I gave it to Bolt and said, hey, here's all the information you need to know about how to make this work correctly. Please read it, understand it and fix it appropriately or accordingly, I should say rather. 
Now, after going back and forth with it, maybe for about two minutes and clicking the fix this issue button a few times, I didn't prompt it to do anything else, just fix the issue. I had to go back and forth quite a few times, but Bolt, what it doesn't seem to do anymore is just go in a, like an error circle. So I've clicked here, for example, horse supplements in the United States, and now I've got the keywords here, uh, which is great, the keyword research for that. Now I've got a bunch, so for example, horse supplements calming, the monthly search volume is 1,900. The competition is very, very high. Uh, but the keyword, the cost per click is there as well, so you can start making your suggestions. So what do you do with this now once it's in Bolt and you know that it's using correct data because you've given it from, um, you've given the data API from Data for SEO. Let's just make sure that it's not just all of a sudden making fake data up here because uh, it's got the search results, joint horse supplements, and we are using the keyword suggestions. I'm just going to go to the playground in data for SEO and just make sure that the data that we get from here is um, somewhat the same. If it's not, then we might have a bigger problem here. I'm just gonna go horse supplements here. Uh, the limit, I'm gonna to put to 20. I don't wanna go crazy. I don't need 100 keywords. I'm gonna request it and see if I get any of the similar keywords here. Joint horse supplements. Join horse supplements for horses and join horse and horse supplements itself. Um, yeah, perfect. So some of the key with yeah, yeah, horse supplement joints. Fantastic. So I know that I'm getting, you know, the same, if not very similar keywords there. So I'm pretty sure that the data is coming through from data for SEO. I can also check as well the usage. If I go to dashboard, and I know that I've just used a little bit more today as well. So great, it's calling the data. So back in Bolt New, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can deploy this app and then you have a URL where you can access it, right? Or if it's just this that you want and you want to embed it into your website, you can ask it to give you the iframe or give you the code so you can embed this into your website. Now, if I want to embed this to my site, I've got the embed code there. I got to make sure that that's deployed. So that's being hosted because you need to host this tool somewhere. And then you can inject that little HTML into your website. I'm not going to show you how to do that because that's not part of this video. But in a second, without really knowing how to code at all, using this great tool, Bolt New and Data for SEO to be able to get up-to-date data, my problem is kind of solved in terms of building our own custom solution for me. The next step for me personally would be to add two functionalities here to add a pay as you go feature on this app where I only kind of give, I only charge for the credits that you use essentially. Um, and uh, there's also the functionality to add your own API key there, by the way, as well. And I'll probably embed this into my own website to generate me a lot more traffic as well as a free SEO research tool to help people with their uh, keyword solutions or keyword research solutions. And that's it, nice and easy. To recap, you can use Bolt to generate the majority of the, of the application functionalities and code it for you. But if you are looking for something with a little bit more functionality, like looking for the up-to-date data from an API source, in this instance, data for SEO, you can kind of educate it into saying like, hey, here's the documentation, put this thing together for me, here's my idea. So you really have no excuse if you want to develop an application, you can these days, at least to create the kind of minimal viable product of your uh, application and then you can hire someone else to kind of help you flesh it out as well. If you want to learn how to maximize search engine optimization, let's say, well, you've got the keyword research now with our tool that I gave you. What now? What do I do with this keyword? How do I make it into a blog and help me rank for those keywords? Well, We've got a lot of resources for you in the AI ranking free community, like the AI powered SEO Kickstarter, content automation. And if you want a lot more support, two weekly meetings, a full-time SEO support manager, and a bunch, bunch more, you can check out our premium community. I'll leave links to both below. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more stuff like this and maybe watch me build another type of SEO tool, just leave it in the comments below. And thanks for watching. If you liked this video and found a lot of value on it, I wouldn't mind a little subscription to my channel and hit the like button so we help the right people and this video gets in front of more people that are looking for this type of information. Cheers, thanks for watching.